Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Environmental Social Justice. I'm your host, Wendy Nystrom. And today we have Mr. Troy Helming. He is the founder and CEO of EarthGrid. So welcome to the show, Troy. Thanks for having me, Wendy. Glad to be here. No problem. So you are a unicorn's unicorn. You have started up, I believe, six companies, six or eight. I couldn't uh, I think it's uh, six. seven. Yeah, seven. Seven, seven companies, six exits and one failure. Yes. So could you just tell people what an exit means? Uh, it means the company has either been uh, sold, uh, like, you know, it's been acquired by somebody and that's the most common or an IPO. I haven't had any IPOs. So all of mine have been uh, sales. Excellent. And you have generated over $30 billion in economic impact with these companies. So that's, right. that's why I'm, I call you the unicorn's unicorn because most people are lucky <laughs> to have one. You've, you've surpassed that monumentally. But in addition to that, I want to point out you're an inventor with over 60 patents. You're an author and an elite athlete. So aside from not sleeping, what started you with EarthGrid? <laughs> yeah, well, and I do sleep. I hardly ever set an alarm, actually, uh, get my <laughs> body's done. But being, um, you know, being in good shape helps me sleep deeper. And, and so usually about seven, seven and a half hours is enough. Oh, um, but yeah, I should, I guess you asked about EarthGrid. I'll tell you the origin story. So for almost 30 years, I've been developing wind and solar farms and, um, my, uh, existing, um, or my one unicorn is uh, trade wind energy. I started that in the 1990s and they've done yeah, over $30 billion of assets, became the largest wind developer in the whole country by mm. 2017. Uh, and then I switched, I switched to solar and, and my solar company, Pristine Sun should hit unicorn status, hopefully next year or the year after. But Throughout all of that, the biggest impediment to growth of renewable energy for my companies and all other solar and wind developers and other renewable energy developers is our creaky old antiquated electric grid. Yep. It's yeah. pretty bad. So, have you, yeah, it's a big problem. In fact, several studies have come out recently, you know, saying that over 80% of solar and wind farms are abandoned, you know, canceled after three years and half a million dollars of trying to get it done because the grid studies come back after two or three years and there's no capacity on the lines or the upgrade costs of all the, you know, the old equipment is, is too much. It kills economics. So anyway, the origin story is we were drowning our tears over beers at a happy hour back in 2016. <laughs> and uh, Dominic, one of our, our solar engineers, he's a former Navy SEAL. And he was bragging to his girlfriend about how his SEAL team used to practice entering enemy ships underwater by cutting through the side of the ship the you know plate would fall in water would rush in they'd rush in and you know pow 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 practice taken over right anyway it was like yeah that thing could take your arm off we used this you know plasma cutting torch twenty thousand degrees we're all like dude you're such a badass um anyway that night middle of night i wake up at like one o'clock in the morning and i'm like plasma twenty thousand degrees i wonder if that's hot enough to melt rock because if we could go underground with new transmission lines that would solve almost everything. You know, it takes 10 to 20 years to get new transmission lines permitted and built because everybody fights it, right? No one wants a new power line going through their community. Anyway, couldn't stop thinking about it. So finally hired a big engineering firm and did a, they did a study. Uh, yes, it'll work. Two, no one's doing this. Three, you can board speeds of up to one kilometer per day, but there's some technical challenges you'll have to overcome. And number four, here's your operating OPEX, operating expenses. So I ran the math on that and in my career, 30 years, I've hired numerous companies over 100 times to you know, bore tunnels under creeks and rivers and railroad tracks and whatever. And I was like, wow, this can't be right. This is way cheaper. So anyway, I started a little company and built the first prototype in 2017, filed the first set of patents. And here we are today with going out in the field, I have customer that uh, customer customer revenue from our first tunnel and going to start doing a bunch more in the next month or two. I, I so love this. So one of the things that really pulled me into talking to you was, so I'm a geochemist and I did my research using an inductively coupled plasma atomic emission spectrometer. We called it the random number getter, but it used it a, used a plasma flame. Huh. So when I saw you using plasma for your boring, I was just like, well, this is very, I mean, why did I think of this 20 years ago? <laughs> right? I know. I know. And, and, and our, our infrastructure is not good. And we're trying to put everything into electric. We're trying to use all renewables. Yeah. And our system can't handle it. So we desperately need this. And yeah. you have other applications that you want to use it for um, water and gas, vehicles and pedestrians. So this is a multi-use facility that you're creating. 
Yeah, it is. Um, and the tunnels that we're going to be boring uh, are bigger than what most people realize. So this this fall, um, like probably next month or the month after, uh, we have our two torch machine um, in manufacturing should be ready to deploy. And those are going to be like one meter diameter um, tunnels or hard rock trenching, which is fairly small, you know, like three feet, one yard. Um, but our main design and most of our patents are around a much bigger, which is two and a half meters. I've been in metrics for 30 years. I think the U.S. is the only country on the planet that still yeah. uses feet. But anyway, uh, two and a half meters is eight eight feet. Um, so it's big, you know, big enough. I'm six foot one, so plenty big for, for me to walk around in. So, you know, a tunnel that large, yeah, we plan to have multiple utilities, water, sewer, maybe even stormwater in some cases. But a pretty exciting opportunity is we have a signed agreement with a company called Pipe Dream Labs. Yeah. They're also venture capital backed like we are. And they have a robot that moves our Amazon and Whole Foods stuff through 20 inch tubes at 100 miles an hour. So oh. to take trucks off the road, we're going to put a bunch of their tubes in our tunnels and serve neighborhoods and communities with, you know, with faster delivery. You know, I'm, I'm so glad you mentioned the transit side of this because, you know, when I live in Los Angeles, a lot of time on the road. And most of the time when I'm out there, it's 90 percent semi trucks on the highway. Right. And every time I'm out there, I'm thinking we've got to find a way to move this more efficiently, get them off the road, put them underground, but whatever needs to be done because it's clogging up the pedestrian highways, which hopefully rail will take off and we won't have to worry about that. So right. you're kind of this multifaceted, you can help not only get our electricity up and running, but our transportation of goods. That's right. At record speed. I mean, not 60 miles an hour, we're talking a hundred miles an hour, maybe even faster. Yep. And the efficiency of that is, is remarkable. Yeah, right. And these robots can go up and down and you know go right to a set of Amazon lockers in a little, shed or something that's nice in, in each neighborhood where people can just walk down the street and, and pick up stuff and maybe ultimately go right to someone's garage or kitchen, you know, with a little portal, but uh, uh, got to start somewhere. So, you know, and this isn't like five years from now or 10 years. This is like next year. We're going to start doing some of these projects with Pipe Dream Labs. Oh, hyper, that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, can I volunteer to to have something come my way? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. There's a handful of um, pilot project locations that we're identifying right now. So yeah, let's talk about that. <laughs> that would be so cool. Cause I mean, one of the things that, you know, most people, they don't really enjoy running out and having to get their supplies and, and get their goods. If you can have it brought right. to you and free up that time, yep, that would be remarkable. I mean, that would just help everybody. Um, totally. How can, so to bring this, you know, to f fruition, um, what more do you need from people? What what can people in the audience learn from you or help you or get you noticed? Yeah, great question. Um, you know, I would have said a couple of months ago, I would have said, hey, help us find investors, but um, we're good there. We actually oversubscribed our pre-seed round. Uh, the founders, myself and Scott, we've put millions of dollars into the company up until now, because again, we've, you know, we've each had some exits. Uh, so we're very fortunate to be able to do that. Um, but our pre-seed round, we have nearly $8 million of commitments and we're being told it might be one of the largest pre-seed rounds in history. Um, so we're in good shape. We had to turn some investors away. So we're in good shape there. I'd say what you just said, we're looking for um, commercial and you know, mostly commercial opportunities for power, fiber, you know, broadband, um, uh, water. We're, we're looking for projects. And that that can also be consumer, you know, residential, but we would want to work with, say, a neighborhood, you know, or a whole cul-de-sac or something like that, where, you know, where it's not just one house, we wouldn't be able to justify that. But uh, if there's enough volume uh, to justify it, that's really what we're looking for right now, uh, because Pipe Dream has come a long way on their tech development. We have two. We've been at it now for seven years and we're going out into the field uh, with them potentially as early as November of this year, you know, two months from now. So is there any particular geographic location you're focused on? Maybe something with a little less terrain, maybe softer rock than harder rock? Yeah, our, our plasma tech goes through anything. So we actually kind of prefer hard rock, really, because um, it makes for a stronger tunnel, easier to, to line the tunnel and secure it. But um, uh, so the areas we're looking at now are Northern California, Southern California, Austin, Texas, Las Vegas, um, the Triangle in North Carolina, and New Jersey. Those are the, the locations where we're developing pilot projects at the moment. 
Um, so, you know, anything in those areas where we can expand our network, because once we have a, a network of tunnels, we're just going to want to keep building it. Um, but we're looking at, at places in, in Florida, other parts of Texas, uh, pretty much anywhere, really. Um, and, and I will say that as long as long as it kind of fits with our broad overall scheme of of putting a, a super grid underground, which is a crazy audacious uh, scheme and design that we have here, uh, it it, uh, it will go essentially from San Francisco to uh, to New York or Washington D.C. We haven't figured the exact path, but we've been approved. Earth Grid is actually approved as a utility. We're a regulated utility now in 15 states with another uh, 20 states pending. Uh, and so we can go half the way across the country, basically all the way to Ohio from California. And so anything along that route, kind of the I-80 corridor uh, would be ideal for us to, to look at, at potential um, additional pilot projects. That That is so wonderful. And you know, you just kind of triggered my brain when you said Ohio, I'm originally from the Midwest. And um, being in California, we have a drought and the Midwest is constantly flooding. So I've I've yeah. been saying for three years now, if we can build an oil pipeline from Canada to Texas, what about water from the Midwest, which is always flooding, to the Colorado? <laughs> right? Totally. totally. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, Lake Powell, Lake Mead are at record low levels. We're seeing, you know, shipwrecks and, you know, bodies that have been uncovered, you know, solving <laughs> unsolved mysteries from decades ago. It's crazy. Yeah. And all of the proposals thus far to do what you just described are crazy expensive, mainly because of the cost of pumping the water up and over the various mountain ranges. Huge energy consumption to do that, you know, not to mention the infrastructure. So if we just go right through the mountain and you know, that's been done for centuries, right? There's yeah. tunnels through the Swiss Alps and all yeah, over right. the world. Anyway, um, we just do it faster and cheaper, a lot faster. Um, and a lot, and a lot cheaper. cheaper, one hundredth of the cost. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, depending on the diameter, it's it's maybe a tenth of the cost for one to one and a half meter diameter and a hundredth of the cost for bigger diameters. Uh, so, yeah, we should do that. Totally. Move some of that excess water here to the West. Yes. Yeah, save lives of people drowning and losing their homes and bring water back to the West Coast because we desperately need it. <laughs> We do. And our 300 days of sunshine means that we can, you know, grow a lot more produce right here in the USA instead of importing, importing it from South America, Mexico and other places. And thank you for bringing that up, because we should be growing locally. It's the way it should be lower, uh, lower GHG imprint. So thank you so much. I absolutely am in love with this grid. Um, <laughs> I think it's the way of the future. I think it's what we absolutely need. And what you guys have figured out solves every single one of our problems. I don't know about all of them. Uh, people still need to be nice to each other, right? But uh, <laughs> I'm on that. no shaming, no blaming. That's my tagline. <laughs> there you go. I love that. Awesome. So, Troy, thank you so much. I am so excited for what you're going to be doing in the future. And, you know, as you progress, as things develop, please come back and let us know because this is all about getting the message out to everybody so they know what's going on out there. I would be happy to. And if anyone wants to check us out, we're at earthgrid.io for input output. That's our web page. We also have a YouTube channel, Earth Grid. Uh, so yeah, check us out. And uh, we're looking forward to changing the world. I believe you will be. So thank you so much, guys. I'm Wendy Nystrom, our host with Environmental Social Justice with Troy Helming of Earth Grid. Check them out. They're doing great things. Thanks. See Wendy. you later. <laughs>